are back with the St. Patrick's Day Parade here in New York City, streaming to you across the Tri-State area and indeed the globe. We are hearing from so many of you who are across the globe right now watching this parade. Of course, where else would you want to be than New York City for the St. Patrick's Day Parade? But we're so grateful to everybody who's watching us on all of our streaming services. And it's good to be with you, Jess Rosendale, along with Tommy and Tressa. What a glorious day we've had so far. Unbelievable. And we're listening to the music of uh, St. Francis. Uh, uh, College coming up here behind us here. There's, you know, there's a lot of people still to walk through here, and uh, you can look back down the line, Gus, and we can see probably down around 59th Street, and the street is still packed. We've got St. Francis Prep making their way up here as well. Yeah, as you say, the parade is really going on in full, uh, yeah. full, so, full so, gear right now. Yeah, it certainly is. Their president is Leonard Conway, and their motto is "My God, am I all." Our daughter Lisa went to um, St. Francis Prep talking to young men and women who seek the finest Catholic education available. That's what they say. I love that camera angle where they lift the banner up and as they go marching right past one of our photographers there. He's doing a great job. You feel like you're really in the middle of the action. Yeah, and it was St. Anthony's High School band that I give credit to. Uh, I didn't give credit as to went by there, but uh, St. Francis Prep now. Proud traditions of St. Francis Preparatory School Church stretches back over 150 years to a simple building on Baltic Street in Brooklyn, New York. New York State Corrections Emerald Society. Yeah, the pipe band was founded in 1998. The mission of the Capital District Celtic Culture Association is to support and preserve the Celtic culture. Well, when you look at the New York Correction at Emerald Society, they were founded in 99 and they have continued to grow. There are four types of membership, and if you are part of that organization, they would love to have you. The purpose of the society, take pride in representing the Department of Correction and its Irish lineage, lineage or spirit. It serves as a platform camaraderie. Let's hear from the music. and uh, they have a pipe band coming up behind us here. There's pipe bands all over the place, but the society itself, the president, Scott C. McPhail. First president is uh, Casey Quinn. Second president is Timmy Rizzuto. Treasurer is Adrian Lally. And I, I love the kids, by the way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> look, look, look at the, children. the officers there. Beautiful. Dan Sheehan is marching today, and we just want to send hey, out Sheehan. well wishes to Margaret Sheehan. I know you're watching it from home. Missing you, Margaret. The board of directors, Sean P. Rourke, Frank, and Thomas, Akuri, and Michael Pitcher. Keeping the tradition alive, Gus. You know, there's something magical even in this day and age. We all kind of have video cameras on our phones, and we're going to get used to, you know, we FaceTime and all that sort of thing. There's still something kind of magical about seeing someone you know or love on a television camera at home. It's, a, it's sort of a connection. And you, you know, so many people are have been watching the broadcast and now watching it streaming, a new thing we do, and are able to connect in this way. If they can't be here in person, you kind of feel part of the action by watching it. And you can do so these days anywhere in the world, which is just remarkable. And you can be carrying it with you on your phone. Like, that's the amazing thing about it. When I was a youngster, my aunts and uncles were all here, and I didn't know what the St. Patrick's Day Parade was because I was a young kid growing up in Ireland and I used to have to go out every year and I would gather the shamrocks in the field and there were special little boxes that you would buy in Woolworths and the shamrocks went into the boxes and they were posted here. Little did I ever think that the people that were going to wear those shamrocks, my aunts and uncles, and there was many of them, many of the hoeys here and uh, there's still a few of them around and you know, 
I'm saying to myself, and now look at, I'm sitting here every year watching them go up the same avenue, and now the shamrocks. I told you, two weeks I had those shamrocks in the, the ones house. that we're wearing on yeah, our the lapel, ones we're yeah. wearing on our the can that Scott got them for us from Kerry. And the idea is they send them to you, and you put them in the dark room, and you cut them, you cut the package, put them in water, put the light on, and the shamrock comes back to life. It's like magic. It's just unbelievable what has changed in that amount of time. And I always tell the story, Gus, and I'm sure you'd appreciate this as well. You know, when I came, we didn't have a telephone. And I used to have to call the local store and say, look, I have my mama Julia Smith there to talk to me on the phone the day after the next, right? I couldn't say it tomorrow because he mightn't see her. So you'd have to schedule a phone call. Yeah, but people said to me, you were miserable. Why didn't you buy a phone? Well, this is the kicker part of it, right? At that time, to get a phone to our house from where it was, four and a half miles from Dundalk, it took a seven-year waiting list. Can you imagine walking into one of these stores today and saying to the guy, hey, will you give me a telephone? And the guy say, yeah, come back in seven years and we'll have it for if, you. If people go walk the dog and they forget to bring their phone with them now, they go back to their house. It's, <laughs> you know? it's amazing the way the world has changed, isn't it? I think I did that the other day. I panicked. Oh, my God, 30, 30 seconds without the phone. What will I do? Yeah, I'd say seven years. The guy said, give me the in seven seconds or I'm not going to kick it. Coming up here, the Plumbers and Steam Fitters Emerald Society. Oh, yeah. As the little ones are watching in the stroller there. That's a pretty good oh, seat, don't you think? Oh, that little boy. That's the best seat that's in the house. Definitely is. And we just saw the Catholic war veterans there, and the post commander for that was the U.S. Army Ranger Marvin Jeffers. And Patrick English uh, um, from Cork, post 870 in Woodside, always looking for new members also. And all these organisations go on looking for new members, trying to keep the tradition alive. This band was established in 2007 with about 20 members, and uh, the band is made up of plumbers, steamfillers, and civilians, men and women. Plumber Steen for us 21, and uh, there's a group of people there in it. The drum major is Joe Pfeiffer, the pipe major is Craig Straffer, the drum sergeant is Kevin uh, Icross, business agents Craig Strasser, Sean Casey, Jack McCrudden, Don Cabarisi, and Tom O'Brien. And Gladys Radigan, I believe, she's 83, she's in the grandstand watching the parade today. And then a bit further down the road, we see Cardinal Spellman High School up from the Bronx, down along Fifth Avenue today. Here they are, and I can give a shout out to Whippy, one of my fellow runners, we call her Whippy, she flies past us all. <laughs> the band director is Mr. Johnson, they're an award-winning Carmen Spellman Band, nearly 50 years marching in the parade, and they were founded in 1959. And I'll tell you one thing, they're marching along very smartly here. There's a lot of groups coming in very quickly here on us. They say where boys and girls with dreams become men and women of vision. Carl High School. Well, the network of Catholic schools in New York always a strong fraternity as well. So many schools are connected, and a, a real, you know, a history of so many alums, and so many people have connections to those schools. Carl and Spellman band coming right behind us on the group of uh, another another of those great schools. They're staffed by the Sisters of Charity of Mind, St. Vincent. Over 1,400 students open in 59, where boys and girls would dream to become men and women of vision. Here we are, Francis Cardinal Spenman personally dedicated the new school facilities on May the 27th, 1962. Many years later, the name of Neham Avenue and in front of the school was officially changed by the Bronx Borough President, the Honourable Fred Fernando Ferraro. 681 to Carmen Spellman Place.
Look at all those smiles, girls. Look, they're so happy. They see the camera and they get excited, that's for sure. It's the classic hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom, with the big wave. <laughs> U.S. on our guard. School is the Sinford Dogs. Coming up. Yeah! Various right branches there. of the military represented yeah. here, including the Marines right now. Yep. Send us a kid and we send you a man. That's the silver dolphins and we have... Uh, you tell us who this is, Gus, will you? <laughs> is it no. the Kakuna? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, one of the things that strikes me about the parade is that you have different types, different, I don't know how to put it, different styles of marching. You yeah. see the military groups that are very precise. Right. And then some other groups are a little more, how do I put it, casual. Yes. Like, some are marching and some are ambling up Fifth Avenue. Well, that's what I said to Joe you have Brady. the variety of styles. Joe Brady, the piper who used to lead up the oh, fight yeah, in 69. Oh, yeah, right. forever, yeah. 33 years. I said, Joe, why did you stop? And he said, well, it's like this, he said. Uh, the outfit for a piper weighs about 45 pounds, he said. Oh. And I'm out in front, he said, and when you're marching with military groups, he said, they have a certain cadence that they have to oh, march they got, they're, they're to the yeah, yeah, and he said I was just getting <laughs> a little tired. Yeah, 33 years, I think. He, yeah. he, we saw him, he's still marching today. Oh, yeah, he marched just, today. Yeah, he, he we saw him yeah. march today with the fight in 69. Yes. There's the band director there, Jacob Martin. Now Mr. This Martin is dedicated to the pursuit of musical excellence and the holistic development of young minds. This is a beautiful looking band. If the sound is good as the look. Yeah, it's terrific, must, beautiful. Oh, so. my Lord. It's, I mean, this, this parade this year attracted some of the big bands. We didn't for a couple of years there because the schools were closed with the pandemic and oh, that's, yeah. bands didn't have a chance to practice and the word not available and there's a, a very young youngster look at getting early in on the parade isn't it their mascot is the galloping ghost the galloping ghost they they that's why you can't see him <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. <laughs> I think a lot of parents watching probably could appreciate all those early calls for rehearsals, getting yeah. the kids to school early. A lot of countless hours go into when you're in a high school marching band. It's serious, serious stuff. It's very serious. They do such a wonderful job. Here we go. The National Police Force of Ireland, the mission of Magarda Sheikhan, is working with communities to preserve and serve. Yes, Drew Harris is the current Garda Commissioner of Ireland. He was a police officer for 35 years. He previously served as the Deputy Chief Constable of the Police Service of Northern Ireland from 2014 to 2018 on Garda Sheikhan. A very impressive turnout to be. Do they all come to New York just yes, for this event? Yes, for this event. And the on some occasions, there's even more of them. There's band and that's what the female guards are known as, because band guard. Well, it's great to have them here. It really does speak to that everybody wants to be in New York for everybody. this event. For this, no for place today. like it. I mean, I see Mike Ben coming across the street there, and, and uh, Brandon Ben with him, they're over with Sean, Tom Tuffy, another man who does a great job with the parade. 
and I think I saw this group singing on television last night. Did they? The Kasamogi band. They're a band and they're also a choir. Yes, they're the high school band from Port Jefferson Station, New York, and from the grades are taught from 9 to 12. Their principal is Michael Maska. Miss Holmes is the musical director. Representing Long Island well. See Ryan Hanlon over there working all day, and uh, you know there's so many people who work so hard to put this together. Eileen Flannelly and Michael doing a great job the other night on the on the gala and the band. What are they doing? And Tressa, tell us a little bit because you were the age of the Grand Marshal this year, and there are several ages. Like, the Grand Marshal has, uh, I don't want to say a staff, but an entire team that marched with her this year. Who are all those different people, the different aides of the Grand Marshal? The what are they aides, doing? They, yes, they're all nominated for all the different Irish organizations okay. here in New York, each one of them such high provals. I was doing the journal for the St. Patrick's Day Parade at our, our banquet, our Grand Marshal Aids reception out in Anton's on March the 2nd, and I was getting all the bios and the, oh my goodness, such impressive people. Each yeah. one, like for the ladies, ancient order for Vernon's, uh, we have Bridget Hernandez, just to name one. She had such an impressive, every one of them is impre I was impressed. And I was humbled to be there, I said, alongside these wonderful teachers, lawyers, doctors from every part of the community, firefighters, policemen, everyone. And I'll tell you what's even better, Gus. We had a priest, Father Reed. <laughs> His job before he became a priest, he was a chucker out at CBGB's. Remember that club down in the village? Did you remember, like the, the, the Rock Club? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he actually decided that he had enough of that and he became a priest. Well, Father Reed. That's what we call a 180. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. There's a sober St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. William Spencer that. Riley is the founder and chairman. Reverend Thomas Hoare and Patrick O'Garman are some of the people. Tammy uh, Ellen McLaughlin, executive the, director, such a hard worker. And their primary mission in St. Patrick's Day is to reduce the, reclaim, actually, the true spirit of St. Patrick's Day by changing the perception and experience from an occasion of uh, binge drinking and other misuse of alcohol to a celebration of the richness of the Irish culture and the legacy of St. Patrick. And here is the Park Ridge High School Band. Patrick's Day Foundation, of course, uh, Hilary Byrne is the foundation uh, chairman, Sean Lane is the parade chairman and the vice chairman of the foundation, and uh, they had great music the other night, they had uh, oh, Padraig they had Allen. The, that's and, uh, right, the McLean Avenue Band, Padraig yeah. does such a wonderful, I've never been to an event yet with the McLean Avenue Band played, and 
people sat down. <laughs> Everyone gets up dancing to Paul Regalna and his band. They're absolutely fantastic. It's it's kind of the music is contagious, especially you know, once all the bagpipes start to go and they the, where the music ricochets off the the buildings, and particularly in Midtown. Uh, this orchestral effect that, that kind of uh, transcends all the streets. And I mean, it, it's a very, uh, it's a very impressive night when you do put that night together. And Hillary and Sean did a great job, and of course, it's lovely to see, you know, the the people flock there. And Tony Dalton, nice to see him in. And as you say, they work hard on this all year. This is a oh, they work very hard. It's really, it's you never stop working. Once this is they, today is finished, just start they, walking. They start tomorrow. They, like yeah, I hope they get tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but take, take tomorrow off, but by Monday, it's by back Monday, on track Monday, again. All right, yeah. They're all hard walkers. So, you know, I, I walked up that green line today, and it was absolutely amazing. And I, I was wondering, that the painting of the green line on Fifth Avenue is really founded by the continuous generosity of the Fitzsimons family in honour of the late John Fitzsimmons, Vice Chairman Emeritus of the board of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We actually, my, what I did with my the fellow aides this morning, we had all green gloves. The Loris watch got us beautiful green gloves this year. We all held our hands over the green line and the photographer That's took a nice. picture. Wasn't that cute? I have to give credit to Dolores Walsh and Veronica Barry. They kept us in line today. They told us where to go. We went to the Pickle Whistle this morning, Tommy, for breakfast. That's more than I could do, Gus. <laughs> 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 and Rosie's so great, he's afterwards. And there's a look at that green yeah. line there. They, when, do they, they, when do they normally paint that? The week before? When did you put that on? Uh, last days? night. Last night? Last night. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Once it gets dark, to put the green light gotcha. down. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, I spoke before about our journal for the, uh, for the dance, the Grand Marchionade's reception, and I have to give a shout-out to Lou and Elsa De Rico. They're the people, the company that printed our journal, and every year oh, I walk yeah. with them. And they're absolutely, they're Italian people uh -huh. that absolutely love their Irish heritage. Absolutely fantastic people. Lou and Elsa De Rico. That's the Richmond County Pipe Band. And uh, right behind him is St. Vincent's Hospital, the School of Nursing in New York City. And here come all the nurses. Here they are. And are we ever grateful for them? They've been working hard the last couple of years. It's great to be able to salute them. Definitely. Here they are. And as a fellow nurse myself, I just salute them all because it's not easy being a nurse today. And they all do a wonderful job. Yeah, thank you, true. thank you, thank you. Can't say it enough. Yes. Well, I suppose we must be coming close to a finish now, Gus, are we? We've been here. What? Yeah, we've got about a half an hour left to enjoy this hour, parade. Exactly. Yeah, we're on the broadcast for the first couple of hours, and this is yeah. our streaming effort here, which is going out to the entire country, the entire world. We've been hearing from different people from not just in Ireland, but different parts of Europe, even in Australia, that are watching it. One of the ways you can stay connected these days. Yes, and you said Australia a few times, and I know my son yes. Anthony <laughs> is out in Sydney, and I know you're watching today. No kidding. <laughs> and I have to say, it's Ste Stephanie and Brendan, or my little grandson Brendan, they're out there, Tommy, and they're watching today. They're streaming us live, and they sent me a lovely bunch of flowers yesterday. Thank you, guys. I love you so much. I'm told our viewer, what, when one person was uh, reaching out from, uh, let me see here, in Perth. 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 Perth, those are, wow. yeah. Wow. So, a New Yorker on vacation, but wanted to see the parade. So down under. A loyal viewer just emailed me and said, we're watching down here. And that's, the, this is their bedtime. <laughs> that's true. Right now, the Ulster American Folk Park is kind of a journey back in time to discover how the Ulster people's immigration had a lasting impact throughout North America. Let's take a look at that. The mission of the Ulster American Folk Park is, firstly, it's part of a family of museums and visitor centres within Northern Ireland under the National Museums. From its foundation, the Mellon House, the clue is in the name Ulster America, Emigration to America. 
the whole Irish diaspora that is all over North America and indeed in the other continents as well. So it's to give people a feel for that journey of migration. I think a point that I'd like to make is to think about not just emigration, but to think about migration, internal migration, people moving from Indiana to New York or from Tyrone to Belfast, and also thinking about immigration. One of the things that we like to think about is exploring the migrant in us all, to realize in a sense we're all migrants. None of us are really sleeping in the beds we were born in, we have moved. So I think this place is a place to think of movement and think of journey. I think it'd be a better world if we all looked at the migrant in us all. Migration is about home, it's about moving home. This is a place that embraces you. Of course, the Irish experience in New York is so much attached to the immigration experience in this country. Yeah, and I just, uh, you're talking about that. I just heard from my brother. He said it's coming in loud and clear in Knockbridge. Uh, We're glad to hear it. That's yeah. outstanding. <laughs> Hello, we Colum. certainly are. Hello, that, Colum. That as far east as you can get there you go. is the Montauk, the Montauk Friends of Erin. Yeah. yeah and established the in 1962. That's right. As a, a civic and social organization, the main purpose was to organize and raise funds for a St. Patrick's Day parade. Imagine that. Fantastic. There was only 12 of them when they started, and now uh, I don't know how many there is, but there's 40,000 spectators at the parade. The end of the island, isn't it? Sounds good. Look at great those band, great band. Great band. Look at those green jackets. Oh, the same. Fantastic. They outfits. all won the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. And the top hats. Very sharp. Very, Very sharp. sharp, gents. They did. They put that together nice. So many colleges represented here. And following the Montauk group, we have... Malloy University out of Rockville Center, not too far from where I grew up. I grew up on the South Shore, Long Beach, and then Hewlett. And uh, some people went to Malloy. They got a big group coming up here. They have the Lions, they're called. Educating minds and changing lives. The Gaelic Society will foster its members an understanding of the love for Irish culture. Their president is James P. Lentini. And Malloy is a private, regional, comprehensive university grounded in the Catholic idols of truth, and respect for dignity, and the worth of each individual. And they have been great supporters of the parade over the years. They certainly have. And their founders, the, the Dominican sisters, uh, they purchased 25 acres in Rockville Centre, what is now Malloy University. Wow. Once you start the ball rolling, you never know where it's going to end. Exactly. <laughs> Give a big wave to everybody from Malloy here. It's a fun day. Now it's warming up. It's getting even nicer. I don't think we can top the weather today. It's getting more beautiful. Great event for people in the school to get together, come, meet different alumni, meet professors, really, and really get to celebrate here. Uh, Sean Lane's getting hugs all over the place. Sean, of course, from the island himself. 